Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. Hey there. I'm Ralph, behind the camera. And welcome to Cavalcade of Food. And today, Ralph, we are making a Lebanese garlic spread, also known as tum. Oh my goodness, that is one of my favorite things to eat at Lebanese or Mediterranean or Middle Eastern restaurants. So we should tell our food friends that in the Detroit area, there is a large Lebanese population. And there are lots of Lebanese restaurants in and around the metro Detroit area. Some are even James Beard award winning restaurants. Yes, they are. And um, of course, a lot of people get a shawarma or something like that. And one thing you always ask for when we're in there is we ask to make sure we have the garlic. Sometimes we just call it, can we have some garlic? They know what you mean. Or garlic spread or garlic sauce. And half the time you don't even have to ask. They just bring it they as just part of the it. meal. And what it is, it is a white creamy sauce that is just intensely garlic in flavor but very light and creamy in texture and it is the perfect accoutrement to chicken especially but also good with lamb uh, beef um, really anything for that matter it complements a lot of the food that uh, is served up at these restaurants I, I, I like to just put it on a warm piece of pita and eat it like that mm -hmm. so um, we're actually having company tomorrow, and I'm making some chicken kebabs, and I thought, you know what would go great with these? What? This garlic spread. Okay, tomb. Um, and so we're going to make it. And it's not hard to make. Um, you just need, really, like five basic ingredients, but you need a food processor. That is really very key. Okay, what are okay. the five basics? Well, you, the first one, as you might guess, is garlic. Yep. So you need a whole head of garlic. Get get garlic that's nice and fresh and firm, okay? Um, and you gotta peel all the cloves. So what I do, Ralph, is you know I take this paper coating off and then separate the cloves mm -hmm. Put them in a glass jar with a lid uh, and shake, shake, shake. Shake vigorously. And you, and you know those peels just fall off. Once you have the, 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 the paper peels off, then what you got to do is you want to cut the stem end of the garlic. So this is where it kind of attaches into the clove. Okay, can mm -hmm. you see that right here? Yeah, that's hard. So that's hard. Wanna... We want to cut that off. So just slice that off. Then... We want to take out if, sometimes there's something inside a clove of garlic called a germ, where the garlic is beginning to germinate into a sprout. Oh, like a green thing that comes yes. out? Yes, yeah, you know how those. onions get that too sometimes? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this garlic clove and I'm going to cut it right down the middle. Okay. Look, you see that? Mm -hmm. That is the germ. And we are going to just get that out of there. Wow. This is, you don't have to do this. Um, it's like deveining a shrimp. Yeah, kind of. But it keeps, this is a little tougher. And, of course, it's green. Not that it's a big deal. All right. So here's all my cloves of garlic. They've been cut in half. And they have been germinated or de-germed. Okay. We're going to put them in our food processor. Then I've got a teaspoon of salt. That's ingredient number two. Now, is it kosher or just table kosher. salt? Okay. I bet a mortar and pestle would work really good too for this. It probably would. It would take a lot longer though. I have noticed that when I make uh, my salsa, mortar and pestle really does a magical alchemy trick on the salt and garlic. It just when you when you yeah. mash them together so enough, yeah. Well, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just get this garlic good and minced, real fine. 
I'm gonna let the machine do the work for us. Okay. Okay. Boy, total garlic smell already, right? No vampires to uh, tonight. <laughs> okay. So now we're gonna just scrape that down. Now. All right. So now we have three other ingredients. One is a neutral oil. You can use grapeseed oil. Uh, this is canola oil is another good alternative. But you want a neutral oil that doesn't have any kind of flavor. So no, no olive oil. No olive oil. We love olive oil, but for this, no, don't use olive oil. Olive oil is great when you're making hummus. It is. Um, but here we want the garlic to come through yes to be the star of the show then I squeeze the juice of one lemon and I got almost a third of a cup that was one juicy lemon I'm probably not going to use all of this I may use a quarter of a cup or a little less it depends again you don't want this tart it's not supposed to be tart or lemony okay but the lemon sort of the the, the acid in the lemon cuts the harshness a little bit of the garlic. You know how garlic can be hot sometimes yes, almost, right? Yes, so the lemon is uh, almost another one of those alchemy tricks that does something with the oil and the yes. and the garlic. So, And then I've got some ice water. And ice we water. will need a lot of this, but a few tablespoons that we're going to alternate. So, so five ingredients, okay. That's it. So I'm going to put just a little bit of our lemon juice in here to get us started. Maybe. There we go. And then I thought you could scrape down the sides. Then I'm going to add a little bit of the oil, oil, like a tablespoon. Did you mention this was canola? Yes, I think I did. If I didn't, thank you. I'm going to put a tablespoon of oil in there. Do the scrapey scrape. We'll scrape down. Because what we want to do is we want to start the emulsion. Yeah, that's the. Um, I guess you would call it the texture because the first time we tried this, or years ago when we first had it, I think we thought there's got to be mayonnaise in here, but nope. Yeah, it was no so eggs, creamy. No, no mayonnaise. But no eggs. It's just that magical thing that happens between salt and garlic and oil and lemon. So now I'm going to add another tablespoon, and it's starting to cream up a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to alternate a little lemon juice. Wow, I can smell it from here. And a little ice water, here's a tablespoon. Okay, now about every quarter cup of oil, I'm going to add some ice water, okay? So let's see where I got one and a half cups. You want to do this in a slow stream, kind of like making mayonnaise. Is all that oil going in there eventually? Yes, it all goes in, but, but slowly. And as you said, alternating with the uh, cold water. Yes. Well, you must be doing something Let's, right because I can smell it. I'm going to come on in here good. with the camera, Ralph, and show our friends sort of what's happening. See how it's starting? Okay. I'm just going to do a quick scrape down. Boy, if you guys haven't tried this sauce, you're going to love it. Good on just about well, anything. Specifically on. chicken and lamb. Mm -hmm. A little ice water. Okay. So I'm going to keep doing this, well. Again, about every quarter cup of oil that goes in, put in a tablespoon of ice water. And we'll come on back when we're almost done. Okay, Ralph, we're getting near the end. 
this has been about 10 minutes, okay, just in terms of how long, very slow stream with the oil, okay? And the Cuisinart's been going the whole time. Going, yeah, the machine's going the whole time. I stopped it once to scrape down. But that's all part of the process, is that it keeps so, blending and beating it and... I'm going to put a little more ice water. I probably used an eighth of a cup of lemon juice, and that's all I'm going to use. Because like we said, we're not using the lemon to flavor it, but only to do its uh, alchemy. When we're done, if it seems like it needs a little bit more lemon, we'll add. But for right now, I'm of, not going to. I've heard of some versions that actually uh, call for mint. Ooh, that would be a nice variation. See that stream of oil? Uh-huh. Just thin like that. This is some kind of chemistry going on. Yeah. Mr. Science. Well, apparently, did you mention that there's something in the garlic, some enzyme or some it, kind of property? Well, the cell walls break down. That helps it emulsify. Yeah, when the salt and the garlic do their thing, the salt helps the cell walls of the garlic break down to emulsify. And that's what creates that creamy, almost mayonnaise-y like texture. And, and the smoothness of it. Not to mention you've been blending it for 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, last little drizzle here. Last call for oil to haul. Alright. Let's show our friends. Wow. Do you see that? That See how creamy that is? I'm going to scrape down, but that. Yeah, that's and it's got the nice garlicky aroma. I mean, it's not just a, a garlic smell. It's like a, almost like you can get a sense of the creaminess of it just in the aroma. So, yeah, it's just really it's the oil being emulsified. Um, all right. Let me, you know me. It's if it ain't a mess, I didn't I didn't do anything. So we'll come let, back let after me that. Come back and of course we need to give it a taste test. But this is gonna be so good oh, heck on yeah. those chicken kebabs tomorrow for lunch. Yes, sir. Don't stick your whole head in there. <laughs> I'm just taking in the aroma. I know, isn't it awesome? But I'm gonna put a little on a spoon. Okay. One to show. The thickness and the creaminess. Yeah, the yeah. consistency. All right. And then to taste comes the airplane. Wow. <laughs> Garlic. Like, pow! Is it making your ice water? No, but it's a strong, like you expect. Is it creamy? It's creamy, the very creamy. texture's good? Very smooth. Too bad you don't have uh, any pita bread. I don't have pita bread. But you know what I do have? Ritz crackers. So... Lebanese garlic spreads better when it's sitting on a Ritz. Well, it'll have to do. It'll have to do. But, um... Mmm. Yeah. Wow. Ralph, you got to try. I will. Can you, I, can, can you make one and you know, dip yeah, it in oh, and here. hand it to me? I know how much you love this stuff. I do. I'm curious to see how the texture is. That's the... First thing that, yeah, wow, yes, you got it right, and yeah, and that's the thing about this, this stuff is that it's not like a burning garlic. It's a, it's like it's a, a it's, it's a flavor of garlic with a smoothness to it. Uh huh. But boy, it is addictive. I know that once you've had it, you'll. Everyone we've mentioned it to who's had it says, "Oh yeah, I love that stuff." Yeah. But if you haven't had it, please be sure to try this because it is. Relatively easy. Five yeah, ingredients. Like I said, you really do need a food processor to do this. But you can see, you need a little time. There's prep time. You got to get some lemon juice. And the fresh lemon juice is important. Um, kosher salt's important. Kosher salt. But 
peeling the garlic takes the longest, and then you're ready to go. It's yeah, that's simple, but um, believe us, you'll love it on some grilled chicken or and lamb. put this in an airtight container in the fridge, and it'll keep for oh three or four weeks. We house the lemon. It's perfect to me. Yeah. I yeah, I don't think I want to put any more lemon. Because you don't want to really taste it. the lemon, but so my suggestion is on the recipe, which will be in the description under the video, I'm gonna say about an eighth of a cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice. You could put in a little more if you to taste if you want. I both Ralph and I agree. So, lemon can be overused and it's a powerful flavor and in this case I think the balance is right and there's about an eighth of a cup of lemon juice in this mix. Yeah you want the garlic and the creaminess to really mm -hmm. come through and it does. But, no we can use this lemon juice make a little, a little cocktail. Yeah. All right. Um, so anyways we're going to uh, I'm going to put this in an airtight container I'm going to get it in the fridge and we're going to have it on the table for our kebab lunch tomorrow with our friends. So anyways, thank you all for hanging out with Ralph and I as I made this Lebanese garlic spread. Um, don't forget to visit the website, cavalcadeoffood.com. Don't forget to tell your friends and neighbors about this show that we love to do and that we love when you join us. And don't forget to come on back. Uh, the next time we get together. And we love your comments. So we please sure comment. Do. Uh, so keep those coming. Keep in. those comments coming. And in the meantime, I, we hope you're all having a wonderful summer, and we'll see you again real soon right here on Cavalcade of Food. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.